Hi, it's Adam. I'm coming to you from the Digital Den of Market Club, and we're here to talk about Bollinger Bands. Uh, some of the early work that John did actually was the foundation was laid by a gentleman called Hearst in the early 70s. He talked about trading envelopes on stocks. Well, John basically improved on this theory uh, because he used a dynamic tool as opposed to a fixed tool. And how he did this was by running a 20 period moving average through prices and putting a high and low band or in this case uh, two standard deviations wide. If you think back to statistics remember the two standard deviations encompass 95 percent of the instances in normal distribution well it's that way in stock. So let's go right to the drawing board let's look at Bollinger Bands click here and there's the 20 period and there's the two standard deviations the classic way to look at it so we can click OK and there you see the Bollinger Bands directly on your Market Club charts. Now I'm going to scope this out and we're going to be looking at some other things and how you can use Bollinger Bands to see if a market's oversold or overbought. Basically with oversold conditions whereas we would say this would be an oversold condition right around here you want to use another tool in conjunction with Bollinger Bands and that tool would either be a stochastics indicator or an RSI. Now you can do this on weekly charts. We're showing this on a daily S&P 500 chart, but you can actually do this on a weekly S&P or a monthly S&P or any market that you want to basically track. Now, the interesting thing about bands, and there's three of them, there's one here, one here, and then one here. They tend to act as support and resistance. Now, support being obviously right here. See how the band came down and bounced back up over the midpoint? and again here and again how it acted as resistance here and here. It's just how the market for some reason works and it's pretty interesting stuff. Now also when a market closes out of the bands it tends to be a potential trend change. For example uh, it closed out right here uh, two times and it looks like it's we may be seeing some further action there. The other thing that's really interesting with Bollinger Bands, and I'm going to scope this out a little further so I'll take everything off the screen, and you can see right here how the markets really found great support every time they came back to the center line. And I think that's what's fascinating about Bollinger Bands. And again they found support on the lower level in the center and kept sort of bouncing in between this, these two lines, this upper tier of the band right here and here. This is called riding the band. So you see how markets are riding up on the upper tier of the band which means there's a very strong trend in place for the market. As you can see the same thing taking place here as the markets all stayed above the middle line and sort of found support on any kind of pullback until eventually it came due down and found support at the lower level. So you, the bands tend to act as support and resistance. Now when you're seeing a market tighten up and the bands are very narrow it means that there's a potential that the markets are going to be very volatile and have big moves. So let's step that ahead and I'm going to scope this back in and we're going to look at the markets where they are now. So click very easily so this is easy. I'm also using Japanese candlestick charts in market clubs. I like the way the, in, the information this gives me. Now you can see here, this we're doing this live and you can see the date is the 7th of November. The market's down about 27 points on the S&P so it's this day right here. If we just look right here. It's at 1,493 so it's down. Uh, potentially going to close lower but it looks like it's riding the band on the downside. See how all the bands have turned down now? And it looks like any move back up to this midpoint should probably be met with some sort of resistance. And that's what we mean by support and resistance using these bands. Now again, we found support here. The market came back up, just got to the top of the band, came back down. So I would expect that's going to be the pattern as this market begins to ride the bands down. Bollinger Bands are very interesting when you use them in conjunction with other technical tools. As I said you can use this with the RSI 
and uh, just for fun we'll uh, show you how that's done. We're going to put an RSI which is right here. It's a 14 period. We're just going to use the default setting here and we click on this and we're going to close up the studies again. As you can see we talked about divergences. This is a positive divergence. See how the prices went down and the RSI started to go up. So this is an oversold condition with a bullish divergence meaning you should see a bounce from these levels. And again when you get to the upper upper tiers of an RSI it means the market's oversold or overbought in this case. And you can also be sure when it's down towards these lower levels it's oversold. So this is just one of the tools you can use in conjunction with Bollinger Bands. I think you'll find them useful. I suggest you play with them before you trade them and then as you become more and more comfortable with them you may want to incorporate them into your own trading. Bollinger Bands can be used on stocks, futures, mutual funds, precious metals and foreign exchange. Very useful tool and I think you'll enjoy it. Hey this is Adam Hewison from Market Club. Until our next lesson, thanks for watching.